Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss this very small example. So we have x, x is defined as c close interval 0 1 that means it is a set of all continuous functions. This is y axis, this is x axis. Okay, we have a close interval 0 1 here, right? So you can easily see this is a continuous function defined on close interval 0 1. This is also a continuous function. This is also a continuous function, get it? On defined on close interval 0 1. So x is a set of all such functions. Fn of t is one of it. It is defined in this way. Actually, it is a sequence of function and our target is to prove this Fn of t converges to 0, right? With this metric, the metric is defined in different way. It's 0 to 1 mod f of t minus g of t dt. So first of all, tell me when we say sequence xn converges to x, when we say let us draw the diagram and try to understand the meaning of it. This is first point of a sequence, first term, second term, third term. If all terms of a sequence are moving towards a single point, then we say the sequence converges to x. Points are moving towards x. That means distance between each point and x is moving towards 0. That means, suppose if you take x5 here, distance between x5 and x, okay, x7 and x, x9 and x, so distance is reducing and it is moving towards 0. Then we say the sequence is convergent and converges to x. Same logic I am going to use here. Here also our main focus on distance of distance between fn and 0. So let us find consider I am going to find the distance that means with this metric obviously d1 fn and 0 I am going to find the distance right d1 definition is given here let us follow 0 to 1 mod f, f of t the first function g of t that means second function which is 0 here if you subtract 0 you will get same I am going to put the value of fn of t which is e raised to minus nt. See we know that exponential function cannot be negative. So that's why no need to apply mod. I will write as it is. So integration 0 to 1 e raised to minus nt. I am sure you are familiar with this formula. What is integration of e raised to x? Will you tell me? So its formula is e raised to ax upon a. So at a place of a we have minus n. So that's why we can write e raised to minus nt upon minus n with limits 0 to 1. Okay. Let me remove all this part. So we'll have some more space to write. Just a minute. So here minus n is a constant. No? Let me take it outside. Minus 1 by n e raised to minus nt 0 to 1. I am putting upper limit, lower limit, minus 1 by n. I am putting upper limit at a place of t, e raised to minus n. If I put 0, e raised to 0. e raised to 0 is 1. See, because of this minus sign, these terms will interchange. It will be plus, it will be minus. So, I am writing this one first. Minus e raised to minus n upon n. So, this is the distance. We got the distance between fn and 0. This is the distance, right? Uh, let us see uh, what will happen if I apply the limit n tends to infinity. I am going to apply the limit n tends to infinity. Let us see what will be its value. 1 minus e raised to minus n upon n. See, e raised to minus infinity is 0. So, at numerator, you will have 1 minus 0. And here, at the place of n, I am putting infinity. So, 1 upon infinity is 0. So finally, we get its value is 0. I hope you are getting. If I put infinity here, e raised to minus infinity 0, 1 minus 0, 1 at numerator. If I apply the limit here, 1 upon infinity, which is 0. So I got the value 0. So what I want to say, distance we are finding actually between fn and 0, fn and 0, we are getting it goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. That means if you apply the limit, its value goes to 0. Distance between fn and 0 goes to 0. 
it means fn goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. That means that sequence of function fn, okay, fn converges to 0 in matrix space x d1. So, in this way, we completed this example. Make a screenshot of it and we stop. Thank you. See you.